So, I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube, I'm seeing people post up pictures of DMX, I'm seeing um, interviews that DMX did with other people that they had in the, in the, you know, in a safe or in the dungeons or whatever, but all of a sudden, you know, they want to put these interviews out that he did in the 90s or whatever have you, um, right now at this moment. And it's crazy because of the fact that we continue to dish out this fake love. This is a culture that we created, but now other people or persons that control our culture didn't have nothing to do with it. And all they want to do is just make money off of it. But we are culprits as well because we want to do the same thing in return. And it's crazy that this man stood for something. You understand? Even though some of the things that he stood for, I either, either didn't understand or I just didn't stand for it. You know, I can honestly tell you that I wasn't a fan of DMX music. I was a fan of the man. Some of the music, it moved me. But for the most part, I wasn't the one that was buying albums, going to his concerts, waiting, you know, for him to do an interview. You know, that, that wasn't me. And I'm glad that I wasn't that type of person or fan because of the fact that right now I can see just how much fake love that he's getting. You see, this is crazy to me. All of these pictures and all of this stuff that you were crying and falling out on the floor of DMX, why weren't you doing all of that when he was alive? When he first got out of jail, where were you then? And this was so crazy to me that people so goddamn fake and want to be somebody to the point where they'll capitalize off of another person's death. This is the reason why I don't I don't care too much about this generation. And I'm not talking about this generation like a people in particular. Just just the way how society is right now. That society has commodified death. Specifically black rappers. And I just I don't know what to say. I just don't. I'm speechless because we continue to do this over and over and over and over again. Then we just have a shitload of pictures of uh, King Von. Rest easy, King. People crying, passing out. And then before that, Pop Smoke. And then before that, Nipsey Hussle. Where was all of this love when they were alive? That's all I want to know. And if you truly love DMX like you say you do, right? You know how you can show your love? Is to do the things that got him killed. Now some may say, you know, there's this conspiracy theories going on, going around about his death, you know, that he, he was all, he had COVID and then he took the COVID and, uh, vaccination and then he had a heart attack after that. And then some may say a drug overdose. I don't know. I don't know what exactly killed him, but I do know that that man had a substance abuse problem. And he suffered from a troubled past. See, some of you all are fans and don't know his true story. I've been to his story. He's an orphan child. They took him away from his mom because his mom was unfit to raise him. And he took a love and compassion from a dog because that was dogs are, are very loyal and sincere to their owners. Didn't know that, right? So this man has been through turmoil, man. Through turmoil. And if you wanted to actually commemorate him, you would change if you smoke crack. If you were a habitual weed smoker or a, Hennes a habitual drinker drinking Hennessy every day. You would want to do the things that DMX, I would think, would, would, would praise you for. If you were in the church, like, I mean, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but if you were in the church 
in order to commemorate him and honor him, take your ass back to church. Because I can say one thing, yeah, he sinned in the eyes of religious people. Yeah, he sinned, he did his thing or whatever have you, but I can, I can honestly say that I know that that man was a religious person and he truly believed in his, his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But y'all ain't about that. Y'all are not about that life. And it's just that plain and simple. So the only thing that I could really tell you is stop taking life for granted. That you could be here today and gone tomorrow. That plain and simple. And you know what? At least DMX will be will get that fake love for a couple of weeks. Week or two or whatever have you. Uh, BT um, award show is coming up. They'll, they'll put his picture on a flat screen TV and play his music. Uh, radio stations will play his music for a couple of weeks or whatever have you. But guess what? When you die, they ain't going to commemorate you at all. Ain't nobody hardly going to show up at your funeral. You want to know why? Because I know ain't nobody going to hardly show up at, my, at, uh, at mine. Plain and simple. So you have to live your life the way you see fit. And fit meaning, like, get your shit right. If you don't have it right already. And taking life for granted is overindulging. Drinking every day. Smoking every day. Eating the wrong foods. Mistreating people. Being disrespectful. Not taking care of your responsibilities if you're a father or a mother. This is what I learned because guess what? There comes another generation to replace the last generation that died. And in that generation, you think, this is what's so crazy. Your generation, you think, you young people that sit, let's, let's say, between 20 and 30, you actually think that your generation is better than mine. That you are truly going to make a difference. And I'm telling you, this is my word. Little Nas X set your asses back 50 years with that dumb shit that he did. And that at this point in time right now, you may think that your generation is making a difference. Yeah, it's making a difference and taking a turn for the worse, just like our generation did. Because before you had N.W.A. and Gangsta Rap and dudes talking about selling drugs and all the rest of that shit, my moms would tell you. She listened to Luther Vandross, Teddy, Teddy Pendergrass, Marvin Gaye, Earth, Wind & Fire, the Isley Brothers, and all they sung about and talked about was love and peace, black love, until we came along. And we said, we don't want to fuck with that R&B shit. And then you had, in it, you had, excuse me, you had uh, um, rappers and rap groups that were talking about selling drugs. And I understand the harsh reality of the streets. I get it. But I'm just trying to get you to understand. Look at the pattern. We're getting worse. We're not getting better. At least we kind of fought against the powers that be. At least we kind of fought against assimilation until the point where we had to become assimilated because of the fact that we had to raise our, our children and our family. We did it for you all. It was a sacrifice. Now that you were born and you were in your, not your 20s and your 30s, you already assimilated. And you're doing whatever you already conformed, you've already assimilated, and you're doing whatever the powers that be tell you to do. At least they asked us, and we said, fuck you. And then, like I said, eventually we had to give in. You all are actually doing it. Whatever the powers that be says, whatever the man behind the curtain says, and shit is getting worse. So, to make it relevant, um, there'll be more deaths, Expect more rappers to die. Expect more rappers to old overdose. Expect more people that you thought wasn't on drugs or AIDS or whatever have you to pass away. Because that's just how life happens. It happens that way. Specifically in the, the black community. Every generation had their artists die an untimely death. Marvin Gaye died an untimely death. Uh, uh, um, what was his name? My, oh my God, uh, Jimi Hendrix died an untimely death. 
The list goes on. But it's up to you to look at your life. Look at that man in the mirror. Look at that woman in the mirror. And make a difference. Because if you don't, you could die tomorrow. And if you do, what did you leave behind? What? A couple of dollars in the bank. You won't be remembered for that. They'll take your fucking money if you don't have a will. What is your legacy? What are you leaving behind for your children if you have any? Because I can tell you, on some real shit, I bet you King Von wish he was still here. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just being real. Because beating up Quando Rondo was not as important as raising his children. And that's what you all have to understand. This ain't about DMX. I had to get you all in here so you can listen to what I have to say. And sooner than later, I'm going to stop doing YouTube um, videos. I'm just going to stop. Because y'all ain't listening to shit I'm saying. I'm wasting my fucking time. I really am. I can tell by the views. My channel is slowly but surely decreasing. You want to know why? Because you are slowly but surely, excuse me, not slowly but surely, but fast, fastly if that's a word. But you all are accepting lies as, at a faster rate than you're, than you're accepting the truth. Dead ass serious. I hear this bullshit all the time. Oh, you OG Langston. Oh, you this, this, this. Bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah, whatever. I'm not trying to hear that. You can't pull no bullshit out on me. If I'm such an OG and I'm such a this and that's, where's the views at? Where's the shares? Will you t t go share it with another homeboy or homegirl of, you, uh, of yours? And they start looking at my shit and be like, yo, man, I'm, I'm really feeling this guy because I'm learning something from him. And this is my point. I'm not trying to brush away all the rappers that, that died, including DMX, but I'm just telling you that there'll be more. The point in making is what are you gonna do with your life? Or would you just gonna work a nine to five and then every time a rapper dies or a singer dies or somebody that's famous dies, you post that shit up on Instagram? You do know like all of the likes and the comments that you're getting when you post that shit up, they're just for that particular person and not specifically for you. They're not. Just like this video, I may put on a thumbnail a picture of DMX and I'm gonna put the death of DMX in the, the, the title and people are not coming and see me. They, they thinking that I'm, I'm gonna be talking more about DMX and I'm gonna have clips on them and this and that and so forth. And then the moment that they figure out, you know what, it's not so much fish bait, but he's speaking some, some truth, then you're gonna call me an OG. I don't look like I'm fucking 48, 50, 60 years old, but you're gonna call me an OG just because I'm spitting some facts. So I gotta be, I gotta be mad old to spit some truth to you. And then you don't wanna hear it. That's crazy to me, man. I tell you what, I'm about to get off, you know what I'm saying? Because I got better, uh, better things to do. I do, I really do. Other than trying to reach people that don't wanna be reached. Or, you all may not even look at my video. So, I'm not trying to reach people that want to be reached and those that are unreachable, that just don't want to fuck with me, period. I ain't doing that no more. Period. I just, I'll just shut the fuck up. What I'll do is I'll just drop jewels on my children. That's it. I know they'll cherish that. I know that they, they'll love me for that. And you know what I'm about to say before I get off of here? You all take me for granted. You do. Let's be real, you could give two fucks if I die right now. You don't. You don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm more than sure, nine times out of 10, if I die right now, you all wouldn't even post a picture up saying, yo man, you know what? I disagree with some of the things that he said, but yo, that dude, he was a good dude because he, he, he tried to reach out to us. Try to, you know, put us up on game. Yo, we gotta start having a heart. Start appreciating life. Start appreciating one another. I don't know where the fuck we lost that, 
But we lost it somewhere between uh, 2000 and five and 2015 somewhere around there we just stopped giving a fuck about one another i'm out man y'all take it easy